All right, we're gonna have a head-to-head -head battle between the Asus ProArt P16 versus the Asus ZenBook S16. Two laptops that are pen compatible. They both have the AMD Ryzen AI9HX370 CPU or chipset and 32 gigs of RAM. However, the P16 has a dedicated GPU and the ZenBook S16 does not have a dedicated GPU. So which one is gonna be better for creator performance? Which one's gonna be better battery life, on the go friendly? We're gonna get into all of this in the video. And ultimately my goal is to always help you with a buying decision and to make sure that you get the right laptop for your needs. So first and foremost, let's check out the build quality, usability, features, and functionality. And then we'll go ahead and get into the performance to help you ultimately make a purchasing decision. Now, let's check out the uh, form factor. As you can see from the top down, they have almost the same form factor in regards to how tall they are and in regards to the width of the device. However, the ZenBook is gonna be a hair thinner. And so as I pick these laptops up, you're gonna see the weight and thickness come up on the screen. The ZenBook's gonna be a bit thinner. Now they both have um, really nice light chassis. We're gonna have just a classic um, aluminum top cover, bottom cover, side panels, and uh, you know an anti-fingerprint black, where for the ZenBook, we have a plasma ceramic aluminum, a material inspired by sustainability. So says the PR, and it's actually very nice and light and seems to be very durable. Um, however, it is not um, completely unavoidable of fingerprints, just keep that in mind. But I really do like the chassis, it's a really neat look. Now, as we go ahead and flip the laptop over, one of my biggest uh, wins for the ZenBook is of course the rear of the chassis. If you look at the P16 versus the ZenBook S16, you can see that there's a nice rounded edge on the ZenBook. So it kind of turns that corner, looks really nicely. It doesn't round off in the P16. It has a sharp edge right here at the corner. And I just don't love that. I really like the design of the uh, ZenBook better, just a little bit more minimal. Now, as you can see, we have speakers coming out of the bottom. We have a smaller vent. You can see we have two openings here and an opening here. So a bit more ventilation, but there is a dedicated GPU. So it makes sense that there's more ventilation here on the P16. But overall, I think they've done a really good job. We have one, two, three, four points that connect to the display. One, two, three, four points that connect to the display. So both of them have similar characteristics uh, with the design. Now let's go ahead and check out the ports. You know, we would think that the uh, P16 would have more port connectivity, and it does have a slightly advantage. Um, we'll talk about that right now. So we have two SD cards, USB type A, and then a USB type C. Flip the laptops over, two USB type C's and one USB type C. So we have two USB type C's for both of them. And we have two USB type A's on the P16, one USB type A on the ZenBook. Then they both have HDMI's and they both have headphone jacks. Now, one of the advantages of the P16 is it has a dedicated power port, which means it's able to draw more power from the wall. And while it's plugged into power, it ultimately gets a little bit better performance. Um, you're gonna be using USB type C power delivery for the ZenBook S16, which is not my favorite, but it is a very nice thin and light on the go laptop. And so for that, I, I, I accept the compromise. Okay. The next thing you want to take a look at, we're going to open and close these lids with one hand. So it takes a little bit to get this one going over here on the ZenBook, but it pops open nicely, closed down very nicely. So overall, really nice design. Let's check out the bounce. That's one thing you see, the Zen screen stops bouncing sooner than the P16. They have about the same screen flex though, so just keep that in mind. Okay, now as we turn and get our look into these devices for the first time, you can see we do have uh, both of these laptops with the simplified keyboard deck that comes with these devices. Like I've said on my P16 review, the, the keyboard does not get in the way. And what I mean by that is it's a good keyboard. It doesn't, it doesn't, it isn't noticeable. It's not like, oh wow, I love that feature about the keyboard. Oh wow, this totally sucks about the keyboard. Like they're just a good keyboard. Nice medium key travel, squared off keys. They fit your fingers very nicely. I like the keyboards. We have nearly the same trackpad on both devices in regards to size. However, you can see that the P16 comes with the dial. Some consider this a game changer, some consider it a gimmick. I like it for Photoshop use, especially increasing and decreasing bus size and opacity. I think it's a very nice tool uh, combined with the pen and using the screen, okay? Now we're gonna do a full pen walkthrough of both devices, checking out the pen functionality of each of the screens. They're very similar to give you a spoiler alert, so just keep that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna spin this back around in a second, but Gonna have a very similar feel on the trackpad, very similar feel on the keyboard. I'm gonna give you an audio sample right now, both keyboards and trackpads, so you can hear what they sound like for yourself.
The next thing to take a look at, of course, is the webcam along the top bezel. Here's an audio sample and a visual so you can see and hear what those are like. This is the webcam on the Asus ProArt P16 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Asus ZenBook S16 OLED and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now there's a little extra detail on the P16. There's like some notching here along the bezel, a really nice touch kind of adding to the more premium vibe of the P16 that's not found on the ZenBook. The ZenBook is a little bit more budget friendly version of these two laptops. And of course we do have some upward facing speakers on the P16. We do not have that featured on the sides here for the ZenBook S16. Here's an audio sample of both of the audios so you can hear what they sound like for yourself and let me know which one you like better. Okay, so both laptops come with OLED displays. Okay, there's a 4K display on the P16. Unfortunately, I misspoke on the P16 review and said 3K. 4K display on the P16. There's a 3K display on the ZenBook S16. For the P16, we have a 4K 3840 by 2400 at 60 hertz refresh rate. 498 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 1.09. For the ZenBook S16 3K 2880 by 1800 display, it says 60 hertz in the system preferences and the system information. However, I see advertised on different marketing uh, material from ASUS that this is actually a 120 hertz display. So I'm guessing that there's two different models available. There's a 60 hertz and a 120. Um, I've not dug into that deeply. Um, but I just saw that discrepancy uh, between the model I had and what I see sometimes marketed uh, for the device. Just keep that in mind. 383 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 100% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.75. So the ZenBook is actually slightly more color accurate, but they both have similar color gamut ranges. Now, while we're looking at the screens, we're gonna talk about battery life in a second, but let's take a tour of the pen for both of these devices to see which one functions better with the Asus Pen 2.0. All right, using the pen on the Asus ProArt P16 and the Asus ZenBook S16, keep in mind the pen is not included on these devices. So you have to order the pen separately. And this is the Asus Pen 2.0. Um, now you can see sensitivity on the P16 is very nice. We have really great ability to do light to heavy to light strokes. Uh, and then equally on the... Um, S16, you can see that nice light to heavy stroke. Let's see if I can get light to heavy to light. Light, heavy, light, pretty solid. Let's try again. It's kind of a weird angle me reaching over the camera here. So it does good. So you can see light to heavy to light. Um, honestly, in this head-to-head -head review, I would say that the P16 has a little bit more sensitivity. Now, these could be very much the same panels. Um, as you break it down, you know, in the factory, but as far as the test side by side, I'm feeling a little bit stronger experience here um, as far as the sensitivity with the P16. Now, just for sample sake, let's go ahead and switch these two over. I'm going to slide this over just so maybe the angle is not um, throwing things off. And let's go light to heavy to light, light, heavy, light, light, heavy, light. Let's try one more time. Light, heavy, light, light, heavy, light. There we go. That looks nice. Light, heavy, light. Yeah, the angle is definitely a, a big part of it, of course. Oh, try one more time. Light, heavy, light. Nope, didn't get it there either. So light, heavy, light. So yeah, definitely angle on that. But even, even now, I would say I prefer the uh, engagement between the pen and the screen on the P16. It just feels a little bit more natural and fluid to how the uh, pen might flow on, say, a piece of paper. Now, they're both glossy displays, so keep that in mind. Um, but overall, they both have really good sensitivity. I would say that for whatever reason, the P16 is responding slightly better um, to my uh, pressure on the screen and how it interacts and how I would expect a pen to perform on, just say, a piece of paper or you know maybe a very, very sensitive tablet of sorts. Okay, now let's take a look at battery life. This to me is an absolute 
uh, line in the sand of which laptop is better as regards to efficiency. So we have a dedicated GPU inside of the P16. We have a 73 watt hour battery in the ZenBook S16. We have a 90 watt hour battery in the P16. The P16 saw nine hours and 12 minutes of battery life for productivity, nine hours for stream video playback, five hours for Photoshop, and about four hours for Premiere Pro playback. The S16, 19 hours and 56 minutes for productivity, 19 hours and 42 minutes for stream video playback, eight hours and 22 minutes for Photoshop, and six hours and 44 minutes for Premiere Pro. They're the same chipset, the Ryzen AI9 HX370. However, that dedicated GPU and the management is just not as efficient as the ZenBook S16. There's just no doubt about it. Um, so if you're looking for battery life on the go friendly, you don't need that beefy GPU. We're gonna find out here in a minute if you do, based on your needs and based on the Photoshop, based on the benchmark scores, the ZenBook better price, Speaking of, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So a price point, you're gonna actually save some money on the ZenBook S16. Depends on what you need. Depends on what you need. Um, as you saw, both had great pen compatibility. They have really nice line and stroke sensitivity. Um, now, next thing we wanna dive into, of course, is checking out the thermals. So what I did is I take a nine minute clip, place it into Premiere Pro. It's a 4K clip, export out at full quality 4K settings. For the ZenBook S16, 36 decibels to 40 decibels during that export with a 72 to 75 degree Celsius temperature on the CPU. For the P16, we saw a 48 to 54 decibel of fan noise at 68 to 72 degrees Celsius. Now keep in mind that export was two minutes and 29 seconds out of the P16. And for the ZenBook S16, four minutes and 31 seconds. So that dedicated GPU and that higher thermal limitation is definitely going to provide you with better performance. However, it's going to be louder and it's going to be a hotter device. So it depends really on what you're looking for. Now let's go ahead and get into the simulated benchmarks here. We have the same device, as I mentioned earlier, except we have an RTX 4070 in the P16 versus no dedicated GPU in the ZenBook S16. So the simulated benchmarks should be very, very similar unless they are managed a little bit differently um, inside of this device. Okay, normally I don't compare dedicated GPU systems to non-dedicated GPU systems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the P16 and put it in the non-dedicated GPU benchmarks. And you'll see the S16 with all its non-dedicated GPU friends with the P16 added in, okay? So you're not gonna see other dedicated GPU devices um, for these benchmarks, just keep that in mind. So for the simulated single core benchmark, you can see that the S16 scores a 6,226 single core versus the P16 on the single core is 2704. So again, very close, okay? Now moving down, um, you can go to multi-core and then we're gonna Cinebench 2024 single core and multi-core and you can see the results there. Now, as I shift into the Photoshop benchmark, this is where things take a big turn. The dedicated GPU does help quite a bit. We're going to 8,343 versus the ZenBook S16 with its 6,773. So about a 2,000 point difference. Now, when, as push comes to shove, that will be helpful. You will have some help with a dedicated GPU in regards to some of the tasks, especially as we have more AI tools coming into play. Keep in mind, a dedicated GPU will also help if you're somebody who likes a lot, like two, one to two external monitors. What it's gonna do is one to two external monitors are gonna be able to be powered by the dedicated GPU um, and then leave your CPU open to perform tasks. Whereas the ZenBook, you're gonna be using that CPU performance in the integrated GPU on the uh, chipset to power those external displays. So if you want more performance with um, external displays, I would go for the P16. There's a whole deeper explanation to that, but that's just a recommendation. Okay, now as we move down the line, let's take a look at the 4K export times. As I mentioned, four minutes and 31 seconds from the S16, P16 score uh, is an export time of two minutes and 29 seconds, okay? Now looking at the Premiere Pro playback, it's not even gonna be a competition. We're gonna have zero drop frames for 4K, 6K B-Raw, and 403 drop frames for 6K red footage out of the P16. For the S16, zero for 1080p, full quality playback, zero drop frames, 
10 for 4K full quality of playback and 11,203. And now remember all of those drop frames are out of the 16,177 frames in the project. So if you're looking for smoother playback and you have higher resolutions like 6K footage, I would go for the P16. If you're 1080p or 4K, you're gonna be totally fine on the ZenBook S16. Now I don't have charts for this, but uh, just quick DaVinci Resolve, four minutes and 57 seconds for the S16. That's a nine minute 4K clip exported out of DaVinci Resolve. That same 4K clip export does it in one minute and 57 seconds, one minute and 57 seconds from the P16. So if you're a DaVinci Resolve user, I would lean you towards the P16. Um, just it's it's quite a bit faster. It's about half the, half the time uh, for that export. Punch for punch, if I was looking to save some money and I didn't need all the GPU performance for like say 3D modeling or higher resolution video editing or motion motion graphics, I would save some money and go for the S16. However, if you need that higher performance, the dedicated GPU, there's just no getting around it, is definitely a big advantage. And especially if you're somebody who wants to use one, two or three external monitors and you wanna use this as kind of your, your base system, then it makes sense to go with the P16. But the money savings is great and thin and light and great battery life. That's the biggest thing is the S16 is gonna have stellar battery life and really solid performance. Remember, links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decisions. I'll see you in the next one.